Good morning. Welcome. We uh, gather today observing the Feast of All Saints. All Saints is the first day of November, which is why Halloween is All Hallows Eve. Um, but this is one of those feast days that we don't want to miss when uh, it doesn't fall on a Sunday. Uh, it's a, a feast in which we celebrate all the saints who have gone before us. We celebrate the privilege of being called saints by God's word, justified by faith and through the grace of God. And so we've taken up a tradition over the past several years that we take this as an opportunity to chime the bell for each one of the saints who has received the crown of life in this past year since our last All Saints Day. And so in just a minute, we will ask that you be silent um, as we ring the bell for each of the saints who have gone before us this year. Uh, we'll remember them and give thanks for them. And then I will motion that it will be time to stand and we'll sing our first hymn. And again, uh, Lori Frankie uh, continues to be enjoying a nice, well-earned vacation. Um, and so Isaac is here, so there will be a little bit of delay as we get the music going. Um, we begin now in silence. Rod Shreve. Ann Barney. Wayne Neal. Carl Clark. Jack Bink. We give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, for these saints who we have come to know and love and who we look forward to seeing an eternal life with you on the last day. In Jesus' name, amen. Holy train, 
join thy sacred name to hallow. Prophets swell the glad refrain, and the white-robed martyrs follow, and from morn to set of sun, through the church the song goes on. Thou art King of glory, Christ, Son of God, yet born of Mary. For us sinners sacrificed, as to death a tributary, first to break the bars of death. Thou hast opened heaven to faith. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, three we name thee, though in essence only one, undivided God we claim thee, and adoring bend the knee, while we own the mystery. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered together to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our own unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from this, our sinful condition. Together as His people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you. For His sake He forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, that you lead me to God. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have made me, O Lord, faithful God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. 
to you, O soul begotten, the Father's Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit alone are Lord most high. In God the Father's glory, Amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people all time into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly life, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the Feast of All Saints is from Revelation to St. John, chapter 7. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know the Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But what we know, that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from our life, the Lamb upon the throne, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Gospel. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, brothers and sisters, I tell you we need to wrestle with this verse. We need to ask ourselves, do we really believe that the meek are blessed right now? And that the meek stand in line to inherit the earth. And you may answer without thinking about it. Of course. Of course we believe it. This is one of Jesus' most famous statements. And it's a beautiful one. Of course we believe it. But we know from the Bible there are different kinds of faith. There's a kind of faith that is willing to applaud politely and say someone should cross-stitch that on a pillow somewhere. And then there's another kind of faith that is about life and death. The kind of faith that goes into a garden and sweats blood and says, not this cup, please. But not as I will, as you will. Living faith says, show me the cross. I want it because I want to follow Christ. Living faith clings to a promise of God with both hands and says, I will give up my life rather than let go God's word. And while we like the sound of the words, the Beatitudes, blessed are the meek. It's another thing to decide, I will be meek. And I will be blessed in meekness. After all, we hear other things that we also like to quote. Fortune favors the bold. Is that one also true? Can they both be true at the same time? If you don't stand up for yourself, oh, then no one will stand up for you. Which of these do we believe? Which are we willing to bet the way we live our lives on? I want to dig into this word meek. What does Jesus mean by this word meek? Before Matthew took up that Greek word that he uses here, and not just here, but in a number of important verses in the Gospel of Matthew, the ancient Greeks would use this word to speak of something that was naturally very strong, but that had become tamed or restrained. And so you could talk about wind in the sails that was just the right amount so that it didn't rip the sail from the mast, but allowed you to go where you wanted to go. Or you could talk about a tonic that had been balanced at the apothecary so that it wasn't too strong for you to take, but it became medicine. Or very often, they would talk about horses that were trained for war, that were made meek for war. See, 
to be meek in these terms is not to be a shrinking violet, sickly and shy. The meek are strong, but controlled. So Matthew 21, when Jesus enters Jerusalem, with palms waving and people saying, this guy's king, we hear, behold, your king is coming to you, humble, meek, and mounted on a donkey. In this case, the word for meek means he's not coming armed and on a charger to fight. Then again, in Matthew 11, Jesus invites us, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here, Jesus promises, I'm not going to be that kind of taskmaster who rides you until you're completely worn out. My yoke is easy. Meekness is being gentle and lowly in heart, and yet saying, we've got work to do. Let's go. You think of the war horse that was described as being made meek. It was not that this horse would fall before an enemy and say, I give up the battlefield. No, but it was a horse who, when he heard all of the noise of battle, he didn't spook. He didn't buck the rider and run away. But he stood there ready for what came. And that's precisely what's at stake in the psalm which Jesus has quoted for his beatitude. Because blessed are the meek who will inherit the earth. Jesus didn't write that first. It comes from Psalm 37. 1,000 years before Jesus, David said, the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. And he quotes this a number of times in Psalm 37. But here's how Psalm 37 begins. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will fade soon like the grass and wither like the green herb. See, the brash, unbroken horse sees battle, throws off the rider, and flees. He frets over the evildoer, but the meek does not fret over the evildoer. The meek says, okay, this is the world. What do you expect? They're going to be evildoers doing their evil things. On the other hand, I will delight myself in the Lord, as David says in Psalm 37. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. God will act. The meek warhorse knows his rider, knows his business, and will act. Again and again, Psalm 37 says, wait, wait, wait for the Lord. Right now, it may look like the evildoers overtaking the earth. But wait, wait for it. Psalm 37, 8. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. That is the beatitude of Jesus. If I see the evildoer and I let myself be caught up in anger and demand action now and say, we must do to them before they do to us, what do I accomplish? I tend myself to evil, the very thing I know God will cut off. This is where our faith must choose which way we will go. Do we believe that God will cut off the evil? Do we believe that he will intervene and give to his people the land that he has promised? Or do we think that to get yours, you must jump up and take it from someone else? Do we think that if we act as the meek, we will be doormats and the cause of truth will lose? I know what the world around me tempts me to believe. I hear it every day. Every day I hear it. To get justice, I'm told I have to get angry. I have to get in people's faces. Well, we've had a lot of anger over the past several years. Has it gotten us justice? Has truth come with it? We've been unruly and unrestrained. What ground have we gained? Here is the truth. Rebelliousness is often cowardice. 
it is often an inability to say, blessed are those who are persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It is often a way to say, I'm afraid to keep suffering like this and wait for the command of the Lord. Rebelliousness is faithlessness because God establishes all authority and he does draw a line and say, thus far and no farther, wait for the Lord. Those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. The Psalm 37, verses 16 through 17, tell the story of bravery, for they say, better is the little that the righteous has. It admits it. In this world, in this time, while you're waiting, the righteous will feel like they have so very little and that they need to hang on and stand up for it or they will lose it. But better is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. And he gives us this day our daily bread. He doesn't give us this day our yearly bread, but he gives us enough to take courage that he will keep providing. Now David is not talking theory. David lived this stuff. His faith had to take these ideas and put them into action. He was a mighty warrior who slew thousands of Philistines, and then he found an enemy more subtle. David was so successful that the king before David, Saul, grew jealous of David's success, grew paranoid. Saul was the opposite of the meekness that we find in the Beatitude. Saul was proud. He was undisciplined. The word that we use that wouldn't have made sense back then, but it's perfect for describing Saul, he went around half-cocked. He wasn't ready for battle, but he was wanting to find it. And he wasn't prepared when he found it. And Saul constantly suspected that David was going to rebel. So Saul hunted David to slay him. And this is classic Saul. He actually corners David without realizing it. He's got David in a cave where all he has to do is take his soldiers in there and he's got David, it's over. But instead, what does he do? He goes into the cave to relieve himself. And there David is, God's delivered my enemy right into my hands. I am here armed and Saul is here relieving himself. I can end this right now. You want a picture of meekness, of strength restrained. There is the arm of David and the sword of David that had slain thousands of Philistines that the Lord had blessed and delivered his enemy before him. And David sheathes his sword and will not touch the flesh of the anointed of God. Saul leaves the cave. And again, David could have stayed hiding in the cave and let Saul go off. But David follows Saul out of the cave and he says, look, I could have ended it if I was what you thought I was. I'm a loyal servant. Can't we have peace? When David risked that, he could have been killed that moment. But he waited for the Lord. And the meek shall inherit the land. Saul was never given to be able to kill David. But Saul was defeated by his own foolishness and David was the next king. He waited for the Lord, and he inherited the land. What about us today? Do we believe it? Do we believe that if we commit our cause to the Lord, that he will not leave us defenseless, and that even in the midst of persecution, we are blessed, that we can rejoice and be happy in the Lord? If we choose to believe it, and brothers and sisters, we should believe it with all our hearts. We need to pay attention then to the words. Because it does not say that we have yet been given the earth. It says the meek will inherit the earth. That's future tense. That's not yet. That's those who wait for the Lord shall later inherit the land. And so to live out this faith means that we are going to watch the evil gain ground, we are going to watch the evil collect their trophies, and then they are going to boast in our faces, and blessed are you when they slander you.
because so they did to the prophets of God. To believe this means holding to Psalm 37, 16. Better is the little the righteous has than the abundance of the many wicked because it looks like they have more, but they will lose it all. And they have been written out of the will of the only one who overcomes death. We who wait will inherit. And Jesus, he came himself to Jerusalem meek. Matthew makes that clear using that same word when Jesus comes. His followers brought palms. They thought they were bringing something that looked like spears to say, we're ready if you give us other weapons. We will be your army. But Jesus chose to come on a donkey. And when he entered Jerusalem with them all saying, you must fight our enemies, Jesus. You are the son of David. Well, Jesus proved to be a true son of David. And he did not turn to Pilate's headquarters. He turned to the temple. And the only violence the Gospels attribute to Jesus followed. He didn't cleanse Pilate's, Pilate's palace of wealth and tyranny. He didn't cleanse the barracks of the Romans or the tax collectors of the Romans who were living off of people they conquered. He went to the temple and he cleansed off those who were profiting on the humble faith of the Jews. He was meek like a war horse, self-disciplined, knowing who are the true enemies, death, the devil and his lies, and our own sinful hearts. And when they arrested Jesus, his arms, his mighty arms that had just hours before made a whip and held that temple ground, they could have flown out and struck them down. He could have put them on crosses. He was meek like a war horse. He would not run from the din of battle. He would lay down his life for his friends. And brothers and sisters, in our land today, there are many who have gotten fat off of the fear of Christians. They make their bread by trying to scare Christians about persecution coming. And we have just read the words that blessed are those who are persecuted. If they would come and tell us the world is going to be the world and you're going to be persecuted, we should say, Amen. We're ready. That would be an honor if we could be counted among the martyrs. We could rejoice in knowing that we've been counted worthy to suffer for the name. That is a direct quote from the book of Acts, where the apostles rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer. But instead, out of fear, like untrained war horses, we say, tell us another scary story so we can run away and talk about how bad it is for us today. How is it that we fear the kinds of crosses that we have seen throughout 2,000 years of church history, that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, and wherever they strike down Christians, the church gets stronger? How is it that we fear that? And so just like in the temple of the old, now in God's own people's camp, there are those who come to take our money, to tell stories about evildoers profiting the land and say, fret, fret yourself. Fret yourself and watch one more ad. Would that God would cleanse the temple again today. But as we wait, for he will cleanse the temple and every evildoer's arms shall be broken. As we wait for this, what do we do? We'd be like war horses that do not flee at the den of battle. We do not fret over evildoers. For even more than David, we have seen how far Christ's triumph can go. Jesus has defeated death. He has risen from the grave. All of our loved ones who are home with him, they are victorious over death. He has defeated the prince of lies and given us his word as truth. He has defeated evil itself and my own sinful heart that does the very thing I do not want to do. 
He gives us the inheritance of eternal life. He gives us the land not despoiled by our enemies, but made new in the resurrection. And that's why we celebrate unreservedly the saints who have gone before us in death. They are not defeated. They have not become doormats for the rest of the world. They are victorious in the Lord. They wear the crown of life. They have their seat at the feast of victory, which will go on ever more glorious than before. And so our meek Lord Jesus invites us to join with the saints at the table where we who with those saints are one body receive the one loaf that is the bread of life. We do believe the meek shall inherit the earth and we see it in the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. All praise and glory to him who marches into heaven with a great train of saints following in his wake of every tribe and nation. Saints that we know by name and who by his grace we will join in glory, saying, Hosanna, the son of David comes. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise to confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. For all God's chosen people, whom he has knit together in one mystical body of his Son, that he would give his whole church in heaven on earth his light and his peace, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, that they may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to their joyful resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of God's Son, that they may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with Him at His heavenly banquet. And in thanksgiving for our brothers and sisters, Rod, Anne, Wayne, Carl, and Jack. Let us pray to the Lord. For all ministers of the gospel and for the congregations committed to their care, we pray especially for Pastor Monty Gleitz and Holy Trinity in Litchfield that they may proclaim the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection to all who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Let us pray to the Lord for all in authority over us, especially those who work to bring peace and justice, that God would supply them with his blessing and that they may be inclined to his will and walk according to his commandments and that he would grant wisdom to our citizens and courage and competence to our leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who travel, for those in need, for the sick and injured, for all who mourn, and for all who have asked for our intercession, that God's great mercy rate relieve and comfort each, let us pray to the Lord. 
for the faithful in this veil of tears, that in the midst of things we cannot understand, we may believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who commune, that in the blessed sacrament they may gather with joy around the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, whom saints and angels adore around his eternal throne, let us pray to the Lord. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints, O Lord, and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he's now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. By faith the saints of old held fast to your promise of things hoped for, though not yet seen, leaving an example and encouragement for us who walk now by faith and not by sight. Grant that we may faithfully eat and drink this holy supper of your Son's body and blood, and in the union of his mystical body, the church, be joined in unending praise with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, Elijah, and all the faithful prophets, the blessed apostles and evangelists, the holy martyrs, and all the saints in glory who fought the good fight of faith before us. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
peace is given and shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us, preserve us steadfast in true faith and the life of the Lamb. Go in peace.
Jesus be forever blessed. Oh, alleluia. Alleluia. Oh, lost their rock, their fortress, and their might. The Lord, the captain, in the well-fought fight, thou in the dark must drew their one true light. Oh, alleluia. Oh, alleluia. Oh, may thy soul just faithful, true, and bold fight as the saints who nobly fought of old and when with them the victor's crown of gold oh alleluia oh Blessed communion, fellowship divine. We feebly struggle, they in glory shine. Yet all are one, in thee for all are thine. Is fierce the warfare long? Steals on the ear the distant triumph song, and hearts are brave again, and arms are strong. Oh, alleluia! Oh. golden evening brightens in the west, soon, soon to faithful warriors cometh rest. Sweet is the calm of paradise, the blessed. more glorious day, the saints triumphant rise in bright array, the King of glory passes on his way, oh, alleluia, oh, wide bounds from ocean's farthest coast through gates of pearl streams in the countless host singing to father son and holy ghost <laughs> 